So we're going to get a fitness update on Declan and Scott. Um, yeah, obviously that was uh, you know a good performance the other day at Arbroath and another important win. But um, you know the, the disappointment was obviously those two guys limping off. Um, you know Gallagher has been carrying this groin issue for the best part of a month now, and he's been trying to just soldier on and get through it. But um, I think against Arbroath on Tuesday, he's tweaked it again, and it looks as if it's done a little bit more damage to it. So he's going to be a major doubt for Saturday. And obviously Scott McMahon, um, you know, the wrong end of a of a poor tackle, and um, rolled his ankle, and he's got you know plenty of bruising and swelling around about the area. So another key player for us that is going to be a a big question mark around for for Saturday as well. So we um, have those two added to Ross Doherty and Archie Mickison, who's already out. So we've got some important players uh, missing for the weekend, but um, you know opportunities there for for other members of the squad to go and step in. In terms of Declan and Scott, I mean, obviously you, you, you're referencing this game that's coming up. Do you have any concerns that one or both could be longer term? Uh, no, Scott McMahon's one won't be um, won't be a long term, and, and he's still you know he's fifty fifty for Saturday, and you know Scott being the type of character that he is, if if he's fifty fifty, then he'll no doubt want to play. Um, but you know Declan's slightly different. You know the. The, the bruising on a bone is one thing you can get through because you're not going to do it any more damage. But when it's a, a muscle injury like Gal's, then you know that's different and has to be managed differently. Um, you know, both those players have been instrumental to the great defensive record that we have in the league at the moment. Um, but you know, I'm very lucky if Gallagher is to miss out. You know, Ross Graham came on uh, against our both on Tuesday and you know was immense. Um, settled into the position really well alongside. Kevin Holt. So, um, you know, as I said, that's why we've got a squad. You know, there's plenty of other managers out there with similar problems to ourselves at the moment. We just have to uh, mix things up a little bit, maybe, and hopefully, you know, get a strong team on the park to do the job on Saturday. You mentioned the great defensive record. I mean, when you look at the stats, they are fantastic from a Dundee United point of view. Just the defensive record, you're scoring goals, you've only lost one game. I guess in any other championship season, this would be a Dundee United team that would be streaking clear at the top, but, but you're not. Wraith are obviously up there at the moment. I mean, is that a source of frustration when you look at these incredible stats that you're pulling together, yet there's still a team above you? Yeah, listen, I think it's very entertaining for the league, and I think it shows the, the high quality and the, 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 the great performances that Wraith Rovers have managed to put in as well. I think it's, you know, it's, it's good for the competition. Um, you know, of course, I'd love to be 10, 15 points clear at the top and, you know, uh, things to be a lot easier, but I, I do think it's makes the whole thing more exciting and more entertaining for everybody to be a part of. Um, you know, I think in other seasons gone by, I think the average points total to win the league is kind of mid-60s. Um, you know, we're sitting on 41, I think, already, um, only halfway through the season. So, you know, I would imagine it's going to take a lot more than that this season to, to get the job done. But look, we've just got to focus on, on what we can do. You know, as you said there, you know, we've only lost one game in 18. Um, seven goals conceded in that time. Um, you know, I think you'd be hard pushed to find another team out there in any league, and let alone UK, probably Europe, that's got a, a better defensive record at the halfway point in the season um, and scoring goals as well. So we're very, very pleased. We're satisfied with what we're doing right now. You know, as it stands, we're uh, we're playing well, but we are only at that halfway point. You know, and we have to make sure we keep pushing, keep trying to improve daily on the training pitch and. Um, you know, we've got to keep picking up those results because it doesn't look like Wraith Rovers are going to go away anytime soon. And you mentioned at the halfway point, you've played half your games, we've just ticked into a new year. Just generally, how do you assess how you're placed at the moment? Um, look, I, th I think we're, we are probably where everybody would expect us to be. You know, I think I said that a few weeks ago. Uh, of course, we'd love to be top of the league, but um, you know, credit to Wraith. Okay, they've got a game in hand on us at the moment, and if we were to win that game, then we would go back onto the, the top of the table. But... Um, I think it's been a really good first half of the campaign. You know, I think the goals, I think we've scored the most goals in the league. As I said, we've got the best defensive record. We've got so many academy graduates playing regularly within the first team, which is a, a big uh, a big thing for our club because of the investment that we make within the academy. Um, and, you know, some of those players, like Kai Fothering, for instance, has been a real key player for us, uh, one of our top goal scorers. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, we're... We're very satisfied with what we've done up to now. I still think there's more to come from the group. I still think we can continue to try and improve. And um, and we have to you know, maintain uh, what we're doing right now in the second half of the campaign.
obviously the transfer window is now open. Uh, despite all the good things we've been talking about, how much business are you looking to do in this window and uh, in terms of both coming in and going out? Um, yeah, I mean, we're every window we go into, we, we want to try and make sure that we're that little bit stronger coming out the other side of it. Um, you know, there are one or two players within the squad who... Um, are available to to go out and and those players know who they are and then in terms of trying to strengthen, you know we're in a position to to do some business if the right players uh, become available. I would expect us to have at least one, possibly two new faces in by the end of the month. And um, you know I think that's important. I think it's you know it's good for the squad when these new players come in. It freshens things up, more competition for places, and um, you know it, it hopefully be a strong enough squad then to. To uh, get us over the line. Yeah, I've been linked with David Wallace, who he's obviously a free agent come the middle of this month. Is he somebody that you've been looking at? Listen, he's a player I've always admired. You know, when he was at St Johnston, he was a you know a crucial player for them. Um, you know, a bit of a challenging season last term with one or two little injuries, but you know, he's proven his fitness up at Inverness, scored some important goals for them as well. Um, but you know, I, I'm not you know at liberty to to speak about that one to be honest, because he is still contracted to Inverness and. Um, but he's certainly a player that we admire. Just a final one for me while I'm talking, I'm just away from the United States, kind of bigger picture of Scottish football. Thankfully, the Championship's a VAR free zone. Um, obviously, you have had experience of it. It's back in the news again at the moment after what happened in the old firm game. Maybe it's something you don't want to get involved in. I just wonder do you think the audio of these decisions should be made public? Um, listen, it's not it's not something that affects us, as you said. You know, I, I don't want to try and dodge the question, but you know. I, I've uh, got myself into trouble in the past for interfering with things that are probably none of my business. So, um, listen, there's been one or two decisions that have went against us this year that had there been VAR, um, then we might have had a few more points on the board because, you know, there's certainly a penalty at Hamden we feel we should have had against Queen's Park in the nil-nil. Um, but look, it's, it's not something that I'm overly concerned about. You know, I have enjoyed not having that distraction, not having those stoppages in play in the championship has actually, you know, been quite a breath of fresh air, to be honest with you. Um, and I'll just, I'll, I'll think I'll try and swerve it a little bit and let the, the Premier League managers make uh, comments on what they feel is right and what's wrong because uh, it, it's not something that concerns us. Very wise. Thank you. <laughs> Jim, obviously Tyson mentioned David uh, Wotherspoon. Uh, another name that's been uh, kicking about, Simon Murray, that's obviously from uh, the area. Uh, is it the striking end of the pitch you're looking at or now with Louis and uh, and everyone else back in the goals. Tony Watt and, and uh, Glenn back in the goals. It's actually elsewhere. Remember more injury cover that you're looking at. Um, yeah, I mean, look, we just want to tr strengthen the squad. You know, I think um, attacking options is something that we have lacked um, uh, on a few occasions this season. You know, and I think to even the Queens Park game where we draw nil nil, we had four defenders and a, a sub goalkeeper on the bench. And you know, I think um, defensively we've been solid. And we've got one or two players who can play a number of positions if needed. Um, so I don't think we need to strengthen that particular department. I do think the attacking options is what we're, we're looking to try and add to. And it's not to replace anybody that's in the team at the moment. It's simply just to keep everybody on their toes and, um, and just more options for me at moments in games if we feel that we need to, to change things up. So it's certainly in the attacking areas that we're looking at. Yeah, one thing I was going to ask as well, obviously, as a Montrose fan, Miller has been doing exceptionally well. Not that I want to see him out of the club and they'll hate me for this, but is he one that you might look to recall just to, to bring in? Because he has been playing exceptionally well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, Miller Thompson's had a, a really good, successful loan spell. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to the guys at Montrose for for trusting in him and believing in him and giving him, giving him the, uh, the valuable minutes that he's, you know, desperately needed. Um, and he's a player I really like, and uh, I'm delighted that the loan has been as successful as what it was. And all the reports that we got back have been really, really positive. And um, with that said, we are going to recall him um, because, you know, again, he's another good prospect coming through our academy. And, um, you know, we, we want to try and now integrate him back into the first team, similar to what we've done with, with Kai Fotheringham. Uh, last season and you know try and get Miller some minutes between now and the end of the season and the hope that come next uh, summer that he's ready to become a, a first team player for Dundee United. Uh, going to the game at the weekend uh, we were just discussing before you came in you know Morton a few a few weeks ago literally were a very different proposition bottom of the table struggling 
um, they've really turned it around in, in tremendous fashion. I think five wins out of the last seven, albeit one of them in the yeah. in, in, in the cup, and a very different Morton is going to be coming here than perhaps visited earlier in the season and give you a tough game. Yeah, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm delighted for Dougie Emery, uh, you know, ex teammate of mine, and uh, Andy Milne is there as well, um, ex assistant manager of mine. So, you know, please for those two because I know they were under a little bit of pressure maybe five or six weeks ago, but. You know, unbeaten in six in the league, I think uh, four wins and a couple of draws. You know, very well organised team, lots of good experienced players within the ranks, players who uh, I know and I've worked closely with in the past, the likes of Alan Power and Broadfoot and, you know, Callum Waters and one or two others. So, um, you know, we know what we're going to be up against on Saturday. They're, they're, they're a very aggressive, physical team. Um, we're going to have to win all of our individual battles on Saturday. Um, and if you know we can play to the levels that we've played at, you know, in recent weeks, then we give ourselves a good chance of of winning the game. But it's certainly not going to be easy. Uh, last one for me, and apologies if it's been covered recently or I'm in a position of total ignorance. But uh, Sadat Anaku is he anywhere uh, towards coming back to, to be available for Dundee United? No, it's been it's been a really difficult journey for Sadat with the injury. Um, um, he's nowhere near a return to play at the moment, and uh, he's actually. Um, going to be seeing a specialist again in a couple of weeks just to see how we can move this along. It'll be very frustrating for him. He's, he's a great lad. He's got a really good, positive attitude uh, towards the injury, and he's desperate to try and get back. But um, impossible for me to put a, a time frame on when we might see him again. Jim, in your win at our growth, you had a huge support uh, cheering you on, a uh, sold out away support. As we know, it's shaping up to be possibly a very close title fight. What difference can the fans and, and that level of backing make? Listen, the supporters have been different class since I've came to the club, and this season in particular, you know, um, our attendances here at Tanadice uh, have been remarkable, you know, given the situation and what happened last season. But, um, you know, on the road there on Tuesday, you know, to have over 3,000 at our growth um, was a credit to them. And, um, you know, I think Louis Moult spoke about it after the game. You know, Louis had been going through that little bit of a barren spell in front of goal, and he'd missed an opportunity out here um, against Partick, I think it was. Um, but the fans never got on his back. You know, he, he spoke about them singing his song for him, which gave him a great lift and great, gave him a boost and helped his confidence. And um, I think that's the positive impact that the supporters can have. You know, we are very grateful to them. They do play a big part for us. They generate a great atmosphere, both home and away. And, um, you know, the players have certainly fed off that this season. So hope for a, another good turnout on Saturday against a, a difficult Morton team. How pleasing has it been to have William Holt and Glenn Middleton and Tony Watt all been back in the goals all at this time? Well, you know, I, I think a lot was made of the, the couple of games where we, you know, went without scoring. Um, the game here against Wraith was, you know, very little in the game and, you know, but for a, uh, an incredible individual strike from, from Dylan Easton, the game probably should have finished nil-nil. Um, at Hamden against Queen's Park, we created so many opportunities, you know, more probably opportunities in that game against Queen's Park than what we did in some of the games where we scored four and five goals. But, you know, every team can go through those little difficult moments. I think um, you find out a lot about the characters of the, the people involved at those particular times. We hadn't really had to face a great deal of adversity this season in the league. And, um, you know, it's very easy for guys to feel sorry for themselves and to to drop their confidence. But I think, you know, the likes of Moult and Tony Watt and, and Glenn Middleton, Kai Fotheringham, they all deserve huge credit because the hardest thing to do in this game is to create goals and is to score goals. Defensively, we've got lots of plaudits for how um, well organised and how you know well set up the team has been and, and uh, their discipline uh, out of possession. But um, not having to rely on one individual, I think, has been really important this year. You know, Kai Fotheringham got ten. Uh, I think that's multi now on ten for the season. Tony's on six or seven. Um, you know, Kevin Holt has chipped in with a few important goals as well. So I think the fact that we've been able to spread out that goal scoring is uh, is really important, and I think that'll be crucial between now and the end of the season. Rory McCoy's already back. Miller Thompson, who just said, is, is coming back. Are, are any of your other willies, as I say, in your, your mind at the moment because of how they've been performing out on one? Um, yeah, I mean, Rory had a bit of a you know a, a difficult spell at Forfar, and um, you know we we didn't feel 
you know, both clubs felt it was probably in everybody's best interest that Rory comes back to us and you know, I'd much rather him being a part of my squad and being sat on my bench at the weekend as opposed to, you know, sat on the bench for four for. So that was the reason behind bringing Rory back. Um, Miller Thompson's had a hugely successful loan period. Um, he knows how much I think of him as a player. I love his attitude. Uh, very similar to Clay Fotheringham uh, and will be another good attacking option for us, a player who can play in numerous different positions. And Lewis O'Donnell is probably the other one who deserves uh, a mention as well. He's out of county at the moment. Central midfielder, technically very, very good, very comfortable on the ball. Um, and I think probably between now and the end of the season, it's in Lewis's best interests to to stay there and to keep playing and getting regular minutes because it's not something I can guarantee him here uh, once we've got everybody back fit, you know, we'll have a very strong competitive midfield with the likes of Doherty coming back, Mikasen coming back, um, Glass, Mockery, Tilson and Sibold. So I think it's in Lewis's best interest to stay out and, and keep developing and keep learning the game. Um, yeah, so I think that's where we're at.